Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad in the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is uh, basically part two of the isProbablePrime method. I'm going to talk a little bit about RSA encryption there. First things first, let's go ahead and open up our web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select Java Tutorials, and scroll all the way down here to the big integer is probable prime part two. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to build on concepts from the part one tutorial. I'm going to go over how we can have some fun trying to crack the underlying foundation of RSA encryption and learn why it is considered to be so secure in the process. Now the foundation of RSA encryption depends upon the mathematical difficulty of finding exactly two large prime, prime factors in a given composite number. Now there is more to RSA than what I'm going to cover in this tutorial. I'm just interested in demonstrating an example of using the isProbablePrime method to find the factors. So let's talk about a little bit about RSA and integer factorization. The first step in RSA generation process is to create two large prime numbers, exactly two large prime numbers. Now that is super easy to do using the big integer constructor designed to create large random or random large prime numbers of a desired bit length. So in this particular example here, we have P1 indicating the first prime number and it happens to be this giant prime number here. And then we've got our second prime number, P2, represented here, right? And um, now, we take P1 and multiply it by P2 to obtain the product or modulus in RSA terminology. Don't confuse RSA modulus with the modulo operator, which is percent, sometimes called mod or remainder. Okay, that can be a little confusing in the terminology there. So P1 times P2 equals this large number, which is our modulus. Now, incidentally, the modulus happens to be 2048 bits in length. In other words, 2048-bit encryption, I'm sure we've all heard of that. Uh, the P1 and P2 prime numbers should not be very close in value. Uh, P1 happens to be 1,023 bits and P2 happens to be 1,026 bits. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's come down here and highlight our source code. And we'll just go ahead and copy that. Let's bring our browser off screen. I have a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right-clicking, selecting New Shortcut, CMD, Charles Mary David, Next, and Finish. It's just that easy. Let's go ahead and open that up. First thing you want to do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. If you see all this stuff scroll by, that's great. If you get an error message, watch one of my tutorials on installing and configuring the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that done properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen CD space backslash CD is short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. Let's make a directory here called Java with the MD command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, uh, it'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to make a directory here and I'm going to call this uh, Prime2. Okay, and we'll change directories to Prime2 and we're going to notepad Prime2. Java, name of our source code file, also known as a compilation unit. Create that and let's just paste that source code in here and let's come up here and save this. And um, I'm going to actually comment out this line right here to start right off there and I'm going to talk a little bit about here. I've got basically a constant up here, no such thing as a constant in Java, but the closest thing here. Uh, bit length, and I'm setting that equal to 32. So in the main method here, um, I am creating a bits1 variable, primitive int type, and I'm using the random class, right? And I'm not going to go over too much about the random class there. It's not really a, I really haven't done a tutorial on it, but it's not too hard to understand this here. But we're going to invoke this next int method, and this is going to be bit length minus 3 plus 2. Now what this will do, and don't worry about this, this right here, but basically know that it will create a random int between 2 and bit length minus 2, which happens to be 32 minus 2, so somewhere between 2 and 30, okay? And then we are going to set uh, the bits 2 equal to bit length minus bit 1. So for example, if the random value returns something like 10, right, bits 2 will be 22, okay? Now, um, follow along with me here. We're creating a P1 reference variable to a new big integer object. And that big integer object, the first parameter in this particular constructor here, the one that takes three values, 
The first value is the number of bits that the big integer object is going to be. Now this big integer object constructor, and if you haven't watched my constructors tutorial, you might wanna do that. Then you'll understand what this is doing here. But it's creating a random prime number of bits length and then if you you know part one certainty 80 which is we're pretty darn sure we're going to get a uh, um, a prime number and then of course we just pass it in a new random object it'll create us a random number here p1 now the p2 is going to be uh, essentially the same thing large random prime number of the bits length too and what I'm, why I'm doing this this here bits one and bits two so for example if we come out with like 10 and 22 Right, that will create a large prime number of 10 bits long and a large prime number of 22 bits long. Um, most of the time when you multiply numbers that are like 10 bits long times 22 bits long, you will end up with a 32 bit number. You might end up with a 31, a 32, or a 33, but it'll always be kind of in that general vicinity there. So our large composite number, also known as modulus, and I didn't call it that because it'll confuse thing because I actually am going to use the mod operator from the big integer class down there. We're simply taking P1 and we're multiplying it by P2. Now let's just stop here for a moment and let's not get too ahead of ourselves. I'm gonna clear the screen, let's compile and run this here. Okay, so if we just pull this down to right here, right, you can see our first number um, was nine bits long and there's our 23, right? Obviously nine plus 23 is 32 and so we have 439 was the first random number which isn't very large and the second random number is this number here now our large composite number is this here and it's 32 bits long okay so in the code right here I'm displaying p1 plus the number of bits p2 plus the number of bits and our large composite number and how many bits it actually contains using the bit length method from the big integer class Okay, now one of the things that I want to demonstrate here is the square root of this large number. We're not gonna to be too concerned with it for this tutorial, but I am gonna include the square root of this because I'm gonna be leading into that for the next tutorial there. Um, I've got this method down here. Um, static method big square root, which returns a big integer object and we're passing a big integer object into it. Now I did not uh, write this method. I can't take credit for this one. I found it out there on Stack Overflow or something like that years ago and I modified it just slightly to, to make, meet my needs. But this basically returns the square root of a big integer there and it's very fast too as well. So um, if we just pull this down here, so the square root of this number happens to be 60,513. It's actually probably 60,512 point something or other, something or other, something or other, but we wanna round that up to uh, the, the next greatest digit up there. Okay, so one of these numbers will always be either equal to this number or smaller, right? It has to be. One of them will, if, if one of the numbers is smaller, one of the numbers has to be larger, okay? Fairly simple in the math on that. And just to demonstrate that the square root method does in fact work and we'll, we won't miss any numbers, I square the square root and we end up with a larger number. So you can see 178, here's 182. We end up with a larger number on the square root. So leading into the next, next part uh, three tutorial, that'll kind of take effect there, but we're not gonna be too concerned with that right at the moment there. All right, um, with that being said, that leads us to all the way down to here. Now what we're going to do, and you can see here is the big integer square object and um, invoking the big integer square root method and passing in our large composite number, which is otherwise known as our modulus. Okay, so now let's go ahead and comment out some stuff here. We want to comment out our square roots because we really don't care about those right at the moment here. We're gonna uncomment the prime factors here, okay? Now prime factors, this method I'm gonna build on this in part three, it does take in the basically the large composite and the end number, which is going to be the square root in the next one there. We're not gonna be using end in this tutorial, but I just threw it in there first thing. Okay, so let's just come out here and save this. Let's uh, clear our screen, let's recompile, and let's just run this thing, okay? So what we've got here is we've got our first number and our second number, our large composite number is this one here, 32 bits. And then 
it found the first prime factor of 241 and the second prime factor, and it found those in five milliseconds, okay? So we can see our first two numbers up there. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to comment out this, because we won't have any idea what those numbers are when we're going to actually, you know, crack it, reverse engineer it, whatever the heck you want to call it, test it, so on and so forth there. So let's clear our screen. Now we don't know what the two numbers are. We just know that our large composite is this number, 32 bits long, and our first prime factor was this, and our second prime factor was that, and it took 21 milliseconds to find these two prime factors, okay, of this composite number here. So let's talk about this prime factors method right here. First thing I'm doing is I'm basically just setting, um, you know, a static, well, no, a final variable here, 2, to the new big, big integer object holding the value 2, and that's just because I'm going to be using this 2 quite often here in this method here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is um, I am going to divide that number by 2, because 2 is in fact our first prime number here, but I'm just, and so if, what I'm doing is I'm taking a large composite and I'm invoking the mod method. Right, and the mod method here at this point in time will return basically the remainder of dividing it by two. Now, rather than comparing that to say the new, the big integer, uh, well, actually what I'm gonna do, I am gonna do this here. So I'm comparing it to big integer zero, right? And if, if the modulus or the remainder comes out to zero, then we know this equals zero and that this particular composite number is evenly divisible by two, hence the pr first prime factor is two and the second one is whatever we divide it by two. Okay, we have to check for this two right here. It's going to be separate, but um, other than that, we're only want, in the next section, we're only going to want to divide by basically odd numbers and then we're going to determine whether they're prime in addition to that, because technically division in, um, in the big integer class does take a lot of computing cycles, so. First thing I'm doing here is I'm declaring a long variable, start time. I'm setting that equal to the system and invoking the current time milliseconds, which will basically be the current clock time there. Because at the very end of this, once we found it, I'm gonna be displaying time to find the factors and then the current system time in milliseconds minus our original start time will give us the number of milliseconds it took to find this. So we're, I got this big integer factor right here and I'm setting that equal to a value of three, which is our next prime number. So I've got this infinite loop here, true, with one case where it'll break out of there, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is check to see if factor, which of course is three, is a probable prime, and I'm only setting this to five. And if you remember from my last tutorial, the lower we set that, the lower the value that we're actually going to get a, a prime number, but this won't hurt anything because we will be wasting more computing cycles determining if, for example, factor, our temporary variable here, is prime if we set this to 80 and made sure that it would take a long time computing cycles way more computing cycles to determine that if in fact we get a, a composite number thrown in here for factor every now and then it won't hurt anything take far less time to just do one division of a composite number versus a prime number versus checking every setting this certainty up to like 80 or something okay so we're checking to see if this is probable prime um, this number right here, which we start off on three, of course, that's going to return true. Now, what we do here is we're taking the large composite number and take and invoking the mod number on that factor, so mod three. Now, instead of invoking the compare to method with big integer zero and checking that, I'm checking the bit length of the value of the mod coming back. The bit length of big integer zero is in fact zero bits long, okay? Um, any other number, one, two, something or other like that, the bit length will be greater than zero. So this particular method happens to be significantly faster than doing a compare to and checking for the value equal to zero versus one or negative one, okay? So if this, if, if this particular um, uh, test comes true, then we're gonna display the first prime factor, which of course will be factor, and then the second prime factor, which will be the our large composite number divided by the factor and then display that okay now if this if it isn't a probable prime we're just going to add two to this number so in other words we're only going to be dividing by three five seven only the odd numbers we would never divide by an even number because the only even prime number it could have been was number of this two that we started off with there so that's basically how this whole entire thing works let's have some fun playing around with this here um 
let's uh, just run it again, right? And so there's our large. Oh, look at that. There are 13. That was easy. Time one millisecond. Just keep hitting our up arrows. Um, so here you can see this one took 75 milliseconds because the prime factors are, you know, much, they're a little closer to each other, right? When one of them is extra small like this or this, it doesn't take much time to factor at all. But the point is using the random thing, we don't know exactly where the numbers are. So let's start bumping the, the number of bits up here. Let's just say we want to factor a 40 bit number. All right, so let's clear our screen off here. Let's uh, recompile, rerun this. Okay, so there's our large composite number, 40 bits long, and it happened to be made up of these, and it took uh, 506 milliseconds, about half a, half a second there. Let's hit our up arrow on again on that, right? Oh, for prop three, wow, it did a terrible job of finding, of creating random ones there, and let's run it again. There's another one. Let's run it again and again, and so you can play around with this thing and, and see it there. So let's, let's uh, bump this up to, say, 50 bits. All right, let's save this out here. Let's clear our screen. And then uh, the first factor was easy to find. And you can see we've got a little pause here. So these numbers, yeah, they're a little bit closer. So it took uh, 3.4 seconds approximately to find the factors on that one there. That was an easy one. That one wasn't too bad. And that one must be uh, must have a couple of them that are closer in range. Taking much longer there. All right, one of the things that I want to show you here while we're doing this is that um, so that one took 17.9 milliseconds. I want to pull up my my resource monitor here. So I'm running an AMD Ryzen 1800X processor here with 16 computing threads there, and um, Let's change this up to 64-bit encryption here. 64 bits, not really necessary encryption, but let's go to our screen, right? <clears throat> okay, so now we've got a much larger number, and it's taking a while to factor these things here, but you can see of my CPU processors over here, really, the processing core is just, I'm not utilizing all 16 of them. I'm barely utilizing some on just a few there, okay? So um, the, the point that I'm making here is we can improve this a lot by doing multi-threading, which is what my next tutorial is going to be on there. So as you can see, we cranked it up to 64 bits, and now the processor is just, you know, cranking away on all these calculations, and chances are at this point in time that the numbers, the two prime factors here, are two both pretty large numbers at that point. Make control C on the keyboard to kill that. Let's just uh, run that one there. Oh, look at that. First prime factor two right off the bat. A couple of smaller ones there. Got a 63 bit number in this one here, but uh, it's obviously taking longer, so we've got some much larger numbers there. Anyway, um, I think that'll pretty much about do it for this tutorial there. I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and kill that, but you can play around with, uh, you know, changing the number of bits and everything like that. If we change this up to like 2048, right? Um, this, there's not enough time. Uh, it'd probably take a thousand years or something like that to do. Uh, so there's our large composite number, 2048 bits, and now it's trying to find the two prime calculations that are within there. And if they're really close, if they're larger numbers, both of them are really large numbers there, then uh, it'll take a very, very long time, maybe uh, hundreds of hundred years or 10 years or who the heck knows. But uh, as you can see, the resource monitor is not really uh, doing a whole lot. My, I'm not taking advantage of all the processing there. So let's go ahead and minimize that. Obviously, we'll kill this. It isn't going to return anytime soon. I'm going to go ahead and close that, get rid of that, and uh, just leave you guys with a quick final thought there. So. Stay tuned for my next tutorial where I will demonstrate how we can tap into the power of multi-threading to greatly speed up the process of prime factorization. Thanks for watching.